In this presentation, we will take a look at multiple choice questions related to payroll. First question, which is used by the Internal Revenue Service to keep track of employers? A. W-2 B. E-S-4 C. E-I-N and D. W-4 So let's go through this one more time, or again, <laughs> maybe not the last time and see if we can go through the process of elimination. Which is used by the Internal Revenue Service to keep track of employers? So, A, W-2. Now it's key to when we read this, when, when we read through this, these key little terms here, employers, we gotta see the errs at the end, and it's very easy for us to, to possibly have a preconceived notion about the, what the question might say, especially if we first see a W-2 down here and mis misread it as employees. Uh, or something like that. So note, that's the first thing to keep in mind here. The Internal Revenue Service is trying to track, in this case, the employer information. And uh, so how can they how can they do that? Obviously, when we process anything to the IRS, they don't really care about our names. We're all just a number. So <laughs> which one of these is going to give us that number that's going to basically track uh, who we are as an employer? Uh, w-2 then is an employee type document so typically the employer will send it but it's really there to track the employees and make sure that they can go after them for uh, any unpaid taxes and then uh, b says the es4 it's like eh, i'll keep that for now i'm not quite sure what what we're talking about there we possibly might not be on that one c says the ein number ein i put number in it but <laughs> well, that might sound familiar to us so we'll keep that for now and then D says the W-4, which once again, that's like an employee form. That's the one that employee fills out to track the employees, not really the employer. So we can probably eliminate A and D and look then at B and C, which is the ES-4 and the EIN. So let's read through it one more time or once or another time, which is used by the Internal Revenue Service to keep track of employers. Is it the EIN or the ES-4? And of those two, it's actually the EIN number, and that's called the employer identification number, the EIN number. So for the for the IRS to track the employer, uh, just like our social security number, we're just a number, we're a social security number to the IRS. Uh, the employer has their number for their corporation, which if they're a sole or their business, which is if it's a sole proprietor, their social security number, uh, or if it's a corporation or a partnership, then they're going to have another number. And to keep track of the payroll, and, and so everybody kind of has the same type of number for their payroll processing, then there's an EIN number. So uh, if we're a sole proprietor, we're not going to use our social security number when processing payroll, we'll use the EIN number. So anybody who has employees needs an EIN employer identification number in order to process the payroll information, including the 941s, the 940s, and then all the W-2s and whatnot. So correct answer, C. One more time, which is used by the Internal Revenue Service to keep track of employers? C, E-I-N, number. Next question, which has 26 pay periods in a year? A, weekly, B, bi-weekly, C, semi-monthly, or D, semi-weekly? So let's read through this again and see if we can go through the process of elimination. Which has 26 pay periods in a year? So if we just think about that 26 pay periods uh, in a year, well, uh, we should kind of know like weekly, how many weeks are in a year. And this is basically how many pay periods we're going to have if we're, if we're weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly. Uh, we know that there's, there's more than 26 weeks in a year. There's, and we should just know that number if we're doing payroll and it's 50, it's about 52. So, if, so it's not weeks. It's going to be a lot higher on weeks. And, and semi, and B says bi-weekly, maybe. C says semi-monthly, maybe. Those two are very similar. We're prob those are probably where the issue lies. And D says semi-weekly, which isn't even a pay period. Who, who gets paid in the middle of the week? No one gets paid on Wednesday and Friday, really. That, do that doesn't happen. So we're going to say that's not it. Uh, you might get paid daily, possibly, but in some certain. But in any case, the question is between B and C, uh, bi-weekly or semi-monthly. And this is really where the confusion lies most of the time. And the way I would think about this is um, uh, semi-monthly would be twice a month because we get paid on like the 15th and the 30th or the 31st or whatever. And so that's going to be 
12 months in a year times two, which is 24 pay periods. Whereas if we get paid uh, bi-weekly, that means every two weeks, not necessarily on the 15th or the 30th, uh, not necessarily only having two pay periods in a particular month. So that's, I would think, of more 52 weeks divided by two. And that's going to be our 26. So there's actually more pay periods when we get paid every other week, bi-weekly, than there are when we get paid semi-monthly. So B is the correct answer. Which has 26 pay periods in a year? B, bi-weekly. Accounting. I don't know anyone in accounting.